All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about air masses and basically try and explain how different types of weather are formed in the United States and possibly other regions of the world. So what an air mass is, is it's basically just one bunch of air, one body of air, a big group of air, you can just, just some collection of air that all has a similar temperature and moisture. So basically we're looking at maybe a bunch of air that might be all warm or a bunch of air that might be all cold. So all of these different air masses, they have properties that are the same throughout the whole air mass. Now this doesn't mean that the temperature is gonna be exactly the same in, in throughout an entire air mass. It's not like uh, a warm air mass might have a temperature of 80 degrees or something. It's not like the temperature will be 80 degrees all across that air mass, but all the temperature through the air mass will be generally warm in that case, or maybe the air mass will be generally moist, have a lot of humidity in the air. All right, so we're looking at a whole, a whole bunch of air that basically has similar properties. All right, so we can describe air masses with four key words, polar, tropical, continental, and maritime. All right, so we're gonna go over what these words all mean in a second, but you also need to know abbreviations for these. So polar is uppercase P, tropical, uppercase T, continental, lowercase c, and maritime, lowercase m. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video right now and think about what, what types of words do you associate with each of these four words. So for example, polar, I'm thinking that most of you might think polar bears, or hopefully just something to do with cold. All right, so try and come up with a, a word or a group of words that you associate with each of these four terms. Uh, pause the video and I'll come back and kind of give you what, what words we should associate with, with each of these. All right, so some of the air mass vocabulary, talking about what types of words we should be associating with each of these new vocab words. Polar air masses, the word we want to think of is cold. All right, so hopefully if you're taking some notes here, you can maybe just put down each of these uh, new vocab words, polar, tropical, continental, and maritime and just associate them with one big key word here to kind of simplify it for yourself. All right, so polar air masses, they form over frigid regions of the Earth. So they're going to be cold. All right, so we're gonna get polar air masses forming in maybe, uh, you know, the north part of the north, uh, the northern part of North America, maybe north in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, up towards like the Arctic regions, Technically, we can call those, those air masses way up near the North Pole, Arctic air masses, but for our purposes, we'll just say anything that's coming from up north is going to be polar and cold. Uh, a tropical air mass would be the opposite of a polar air mass, and this is going to be an air mass that is warm. So these are gonna form in the tropical regions of Earth down closer to the equator, near like the Caribbean, some parts of South America, Central America, basically where we're gonna be getting warmer air from because those areas, again, they get more sunlight, more direct sunlight uh, being closer to the equator than we do being further away from the equator because of the tilt of the Earth's axis. All right, so these tropical air masses, they form over tropical regions and they're gonna bring warm air. So these, for the United States, would come up towards us from the south. Continental air masses. So the word continental has the word here, continent, in it. So Continents are made of land, so continental masses, they form over land. And these air masses are going to be dry. Right? Because they form over land, they're not gonna have as much moisture in the air as a, an air mass that formed over water, which would be called maritime. So maritime air masses, we can think of them as wet or moist or humid. Uh, so these, these types of air masses, because they form over water, because think about how we talked about the water cycle, we could get a lot of evaporation from all of that water and that would make these air masses a lot, a lot more wet and moist or humid than a continental air mass, which because it formed over land, would have less humidity in the air mass and would be a little bit more dry in, in terms of its uh, moisture content. So the four words that we need to know here, polar, tropical, continental, and maritime. So for each of them, you need to be able to associate one simple word here. So polar, we want to associate as cold, tropical, associate as warm, continental, associate as dry, and maritime, associate as wet. Right? So if you want to just, it, it's a simple memorization thing here that you just need to memorize what all of these words mean in kind of simpler terms. All right, 
So the first type of air mass, we can kind of combine some of these some of these different vocab terms into the actual air masses that weather people describe when, when they're looking to forecast the weather. So a maritime tropical air mass is the first type. And this, we've, if you followed along with our four words there, because it's maritime, we can tell that it's going to be wet. And because it's tropical, we can tell it's going to be warm. So that's how here we know that a maritime tropical air mass would be a warm and wet air mass because of the two words that are in the name. And we can abbreviate this as MT. And, and these air masses, when we're describing them with their abbreviations, the first letter is always lowercase and the second letter is always uppercase. So a maritime tropical air mass would be lowercase m, uppercase t. All right. So where we're going to get these air masses from is down here in the tropical regions of Earth. So uh, we could get it down in the southern Pacific here. Well, southern based on the United States, so basically closer to the equator. So down the Pacific, close to the equator, down the Atlantic, close to the equator. So because these are being formed over the ocean, that's why they're going to be really wet or moist or humid. And they're going to come up towards the United States this way. This is how we would get a, a tropical air mass in the United States, is if, if the winds brought them up towards the United States from the south. All right, so the next type of air mass we have here is maritime polar. So if you're piecing this all together, you would know that maritime tells us again that it's going to be wet, and polar would tell us that it's going to be cold. So a maritime polar air mass will be a cold, wet air mass. So again, this is going to form over water, so it could form in the northern Pacific or the northern Atlantic Ocean. And we're going to get a lot of moisture from these air masses as well. So the abbreviation here again, lowercase m for the first letter and uppercase p for the second letter. And these maritime polar air masses, they're usually going to bring cold weather, uh, maybe a little bit of snow or precipitation if it's during the winter, or you know, cold, cold rainy weather if it's during the summer. All right, so the next type of air mass here would be continental tropical. So again, if you're following along with your vocab words here, continental tells, that this is, tells us that this is going to form over land. So this is going to be a dry air mass. And dry, <laughs> sorry about that. And tropical tells us that this is going to be a warm air mass. All right, so a continental tropical air mass is going to be dry and warm. So it's going to form over land and it's gonna form down in the tropical regions closer to the equator. So the abbreviation here is lowercase c, uppercase t. Again, the first letter is always lowercase here and the second letter always uppercase. So these continental tropical air masses, they're gonna be warm, dry air masses. So in the United States, the only, the only place we would really get a continental tropical air mass from is down the south here, kind of over Central America, Texas, Mexico region down here. So if these uh, continental tropical air masses are gonna come to the United States, they have to again come up from the south and we would get them that way. So uh, with the continental tropical air masses, you might be expecting some kind of warm, hot weather, hot maybe you know in the summer where it's really hot and beating down the heat on you. Uh, so that, that would be kind of the type of weather you would expect with a continental tropical air mass. All right, and our last type of air mass here, and you can probably figure out what this is going to be, will be a continental polar air mass. All right, so a continental polar air mass, abbreviation lowercase c, uppercase p. And we can tell by this, we're gonna have a dry and cold air mass. All right, so because it's forming over land, uh, we, we would form these continental polar air masses up over Canada here, where it's a bit colder up in like northern Canada, up in like the Yukon territories and all that. You guys have studied Canada in geography class. <laughs> so, uh, these are going to be cold, dry air masses that form over land. We're going to get, you know, pretty pretty cold, frigid, frigid weather if one of these air masses comes down from the north here. All right. So you can start to see if we know what an, what type of air mass we're going to have, we can tend to predict what type of weather we're going to get from an air mass that came from a certain region. So generally, if if an air mass is coming from up north, we can tell it's probably going to bring a little bit of colder air. And if air mass is coming from down south, closer to the equator, you can tell we're probably going to get warmer air from that.